Hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of Plugged In. This is our brand new podcast here at Fruition, focusing on everything clean tech. Uh, now my name's Jasmine and I'm a specialist clean tech consultant here at Fruition. Um, and I'm super excited to introduce our first guest, Michael Bartholomews. Uh, so Michael has an impressive 30 year career across clean tech, holding prominent positions at companies such as Qberg, Green Emissions, and most recently at Group One. Michael, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing very good, Jasmine. It's a pleasure to be spending some time with you. Oh, thank you. Good. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Um, let's jump straight in. If you could begin by giving us an intro into your background. Certainly, Jasmine. Well, as, as you mentioned, uh, I've had a I've had a 30 year career. Presently, I'm on the board of directors of uh, Group One. Group One's an innovative company introducing critical minimal, mineral free potassium ion battery solutions to the energy industry. I'm also working with Novi, a next generation edge processing small satellite company leading the space 2.0 transition. You know, in my career, Jasmine, I've worked in a range of industries from clean tech, aerospace, advanced materials, imaging, and digital health. But a significant portion of my career, as you mentioned, has been in clean tech, both as an executive and a board director. Incredible. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that over your career, you've contributed extremely valuable knowledge to the clean sector. Um, and as a result, you've supported some extremely successful businesses. Um, now, you mentioned that your experience spans a broad range of industries. Looking back over your career as an executive across those different industries, what's been the biggest challenge you faced and how have you overcome this? Uh, I think in, the, in, in my career, I've uh, faced a, a number of biggest challenges, Jasmine, and these mm -hmm. encompass natural disasters, pandemics, economic meltdowns, existential supply chain crisis, and hostile takeovers. So uh, there certainly have been a, a host of challenges, I think, that most uh, individuals and enterprises face. Uh, a specific example that comes to mind is uh, it was one of a, a particularly, particularly uh, difficult existential geopolitical supply crisis mm -hmm. that would have badly damaged the business I was leading and the industry that we were serving, given our uh, market share prominence in that space. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had six months to establish an overseas wow. JV to build high volume man uh, build a high volume manufacturing facility mm -hmm. and start, start mass production of qualified material. That was a it was almost mission impossible, but with the benefit <laughs> of an incredibly capable team who worked tirelessly, we we prevailed. Mm, and a, an incredible leader, I'm sure. Um, well, yeah, it certainly sounds like Mission Impossible. I can't begin to imagine the hurdles um, that you had to navigate within that kind of six month time frame. Um, now, you've had a wealth of experience growing various different companies. In your opinion, what are the top three priorities for business leaders when seeking growth? I think when when I when I think around the top three priorities, the first one that comes to mind is is ensure that the company's solution addresses a current or impending problem. And this is this is important to reduce time to market and to reduce time to growth. And uh, that that's that would be that would be first and foremost. The other is certainly to focus capital and resources on the critical few customers who will yield sustained revenue growth as a foundation for future customer and market expansion. And then, and finally, is just discipline. Be very disciplined mm -hmm. around product yeah. execution and cash management. Mm -hmm. And how does this differ for companies at um, different stages? Um, so, you know, for startups or seed going through initial phases of growth, um, and then those more established companies that might be seeking uh, rapid growth or or brand maturing. How would that differ between those different companies? For earlier stage companies, they need to stay very focused on product market fit and anchor customer acquisition. Um, certainly scrupulous cash management and serial fundraising um, are, are par for the course for early stage companies until they can support themselves organically. Later stage companies need to be laser focused on customer execution and, and certainly assessing and responding to competitive disruption. Failure in any of these areas, Jasmine, are company killers. Yeah. 
I'm sure. Within the answer, you kind of mentioned that earlier stage companies need to be very focused in order to support that growth. So if we expand on this a little more, within those earlier stage startup companies, what are some of the common uh, pitfalls they encounter and how might they determine the right timing and strategy for seeking funding to avoid those issues? Yeah, there's, a, there's several issues to unwrap there, uh, Jasmine, but I, I think the common pitfall for startups is the in inability to meet product delivery and market penetration milestones. And, and these, these lapses make raising capital very challenging. It makes raising capital from existing investors and new investors um, mm -hmm. a, a, a much heavier lift. So that would, that would be really how I look at the, the, the most common pitfalls for startups is, is really facing on the prom promise of deliverables. From a, from a capital raise standpoint, it, it actually becomes fairly simple math. Uh, ultimately, early stage companies can take six to nine months or more to raise capital. It's a, it's an, it's a, it's a, it's a long journey. And so you yeah. really have to work backwards from a cash balance standpoint, right? These companies need to understand what their runway is and work, mm -hmm. work backwards yeah. to develop a, a, a timing strategy. Clearly, the more runway a company has to achieve milestones, the higher value transaction um, it can facilitate and, and then really protect against extrinsic forces like, you know, pandemics and, and geopolitical oh, tension. Sure. Mm. Okay. Let's talk um, about some of the emerging trends in the market. Um, so, you know, we're all aware technology is constantly evolving. Um, it seems every day as a consultant, I'm constantly learning about new products, uh, new technology within the space, um, whether this is EV charging, uh, battery cell chemistry, there's always new innovative solutions that even I'm kind of learning about every day. But in your opinion, what are some of the, the recent trends shaping the clean tech industry? I think some of the trends that, uh, that I'm seeing are, are certainly uh, around industrial decarbonization, mm. uh, sustainable and responsible sourcing of raw materials, recycling mm. over full product cycle, uh, certainly the continued, as you mentioned, the continued adoption of EVs and micromobility. Yeah. Uh, stationary yeah. storage to mitigate the effects yeah. of renewable energy intermittency, low carbon mm -hmm. construction, AI mm -hmm. is, is very applicable mm -hmm. to a swath of, of the industry, and certainly um, uh, use of satellite earth observation data to improve on resource assessment and environmental impact. And how do you assess the market for these kinds of opportunities and or potential threats? I think from an opportunity standpoint, you know, there's certainly uh, there's a there's a, a lot of open space around upgrading or installing infrastructure and, and establishing yeah. resilient supply chains. However, yeah. these these opportunities require substantial capital to exploit and and uh, you know require navigation of a of a complex mm -hmm. regulatory landscape. A lot of times, a, a fragmented one. Um, the threats are, you know, the, the usual cast of characters, powerful and entrenched incumbent in industries and the significant inertia that is sometimes required to change consumer attitudes and mindsets. Yeah, I think the, the challenges surrounding infrastructure um, is super important to, to highlight. Um, I recently shared a poll on LinkedIn and 46% of the vote showed the biggest barrier uh, to EV adoption would be charging issues. So, um, you know, it seems that the general consensus is that the, there are challenges around charging infrastructure. And as you mentioned, this could offer significant market opportunities within that space. In addition to this, then, how do brands ensure product safety and functionality while still innovating, developing, and still able to get products to the market in a suitable time frame? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the answer to that question, uh, it, it's, it's probably a high level answer. And this, the strategy mm, in this okay. regard is, is not that different from other industries and, mm. and encompasses all the elements of successful enterprise management. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a harmonization of, of all the elements that uh, that are required yeah. to prosecute an enterprise. I think the, the, the common denominators are 
execution and costs at the end of the day. You know, execution within capital and resource constraints will drive top line growth, while obsessive attention to driving costs down will shorten path to, to, to profitability. So I think those are the certainly the common denominators and then being being extremely alert to and nimble to market situational awareness and and being ready to respond to competitive threats and macroeconomic mm. forces. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned competitive uh, competitive threats there. Um, now there's a lot of startups in the clean tech space. Um, opportunity, demand is equally high, but as a result, uh, this has meant competition for funding has increased. Um, so just thinking about that, what advice would you give to brands and companies looking for PE investment? I think in the current uh, climate, tangibility is extremely important. So, mm -hmm. you know, solving a problem that people care about is is preeminent is critical yeah and then ensuring mm -hmm. validation through customer adoption and a growing book of business you know that that validation is is is, is a very is a very powerful is a very powerful tool in, in in securing funding certainly factors like a defensible market position and barriers mm -hmm. for entry are powerful added advantages mm -hmm. yeah i i think it's super important and i completely agree with you know um, solving problems that people really care about. Um, personally, I'm finding when I'm speaking to clients and candidates about opportunities in the market, one of the most important factors that they're looking for is how much impact that role will have in solving real life problems, as you said, that people care about. So continuing that discussion on investment, can you share some of the current trends in clean tech investment um, and the criteria investors typically prioritize when evaluating potential investments in this sector? Certainly. I think, you know, mm -hmm. I think recent data shows that clean tech investments are expected to increase by 10 to 20 percent this year over over last. Wow. Certainly, mm -hmm. the, you know, in the United States, the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA has played a, a significant role in de-risking private sector investments. Some areas of focus, Jasmine, are sustainable packaging, electrochemical processing, renewables and smart technology. I think at the end of the day, investors seek profitable market opportunities with yeah. a business that solves real customer problems, as you alluded to, mm -hmm. you know, key yeah. elements, yeah. Are sustainable competitive advantage, large market potential, and a strong yeah. management team. I think mm -hmm. um, clean tech investors in particular tend to focus on factors such as carbon emissions, water usage, waste management, energy efficiency, and social responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So again, it it links back to that, you know, solving real life problems, um, mm -hmm. social responsibility, and and leaving a, a positive impact on society. So seems like it's all kind of intrinsically linked. And, and, um, making, a, and making and making and making you know making a very economical viable business in the process. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So. Um, if we look at transitioning from concept to commercialization, now this is often a significant challenge for clean tech innovations. What, um, in your opinion, are the key obstacles in this process and how can companies effectively navigate uh, these challenges to bring their products to market successfully? Yeah, there's um, you know there's a there's a significant amount of obstacles in in any journey like this, and mm, and yeah. uh, we've we've touched on some of these themes: solving yeah. product market fix uh, fit, mm -hmm. de-risking technology, securing mm -hmm. sticky customers, overcoming mm -hmm. incumbency, determining the right unit of scale, and really responding to ever-changing competitive markets and regulatory landscapes. These are these are some of the obstacles, Jasmine. Uh, some of the elements required to overcome these uh, obstacles encompass aligned leadership, talent acquisition, the ability to weed out distractions, staying ahead via an agile culture of unlearn, learn and relearn, and maintaining an obsessive focus on execution. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, though, of course, capital is the lifeblood of this journey and securing ad adequate capital is essential. You, you, you can't cross a chasm in small steps. <laughs> Yeah, very true. Um, fantastic. Well, thank you for, for sharing that and answering that for me. Um, 
I'm very intrigued to learn which emerging technologies in clean tech that you are the most excited about. Yeah, I think some of them, uh, some of the some of the technologies that, that I've been that I've been paying special attention to are are safe and sustainable waste management uh, with uh, you know with innovation around upcycling waste into useful materials and waste to energy solutions that can can convert waste into fuel. Uh, certainly, technologies addressing wastewater treatment to improve on current water management and conservation are extremely salient to 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 where we are today. Um, I think maybe finally, Jasmine, with the significant growth in electrification, there is a need for battery technologies that use abundant yeah. materials that can be responsibly mm -hmm. sourced, cleanly produced, and easily recycled. Efforts in managing this broader circularity in the in, in the energy storage industry will become a requirement. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, demand within that electrification and, and battery tech for um, the opportunities that are coming up and also candidates is, is more and more frequent. Now, I spend every day on LinkedIn as part of my role. So this is how I find time to stay up to date with all of these current trends, technology, new products. Um, but how do you find time to stay current with all these new innovations and trends? Well, I'm very fortunate, Jasmine, to have an extensive network of friends and colleagues in the industry. Sure. So, so <laughs> staying abreast is a, a, seamless, a seamless facet of my regular interactions. I would, uh, I, I have found uh, that the Stanford University's Tomcat Center for Sustainable Energy is a particularly rich source of up-to-date information on the latest innovations and developments in the clean tech space. Uh, they're an incredible resource. Okay, yeah, I'm sure it kind of seamlessly fits into your day-to-day -day life, you know, keeping up with these <laughs> kinds of trends. Um, okay, so if you could leave just one piece of advice for leaders uh, faced with these exciting challenges of growing and scaling businesses, what would that piece of advice be? You know, growing and scaling a company is, is a very complex endeavor. I think one of the most important elements of success is having a very clear vision for the business and, mm -hmm. and being able to compel, compellingly articulate it and align the whole organization behind it. I mean, mm -hmm. vision is the North Star of a business that harmonizes complexity, minimizes conflict and distraction, and gets everyone pulling in the same direction. It's a, it, it's a huge, huge force multiplier. So I think that would be my parting thought, Jasmine. Thank you. Yeah. Fantastic, Michael. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our first episode of Plugged In. Um, I think you perfectly highlighted the, the different complexities and opportunities found in the clean tech industry from, you know, the early stage startups to more established companies. So this was incredibly, incredibly insightful um, and it was a pleasure digging a little bit deeper into your background and knowledge. Um, so thank you so much again for your time and valuable insights. Thank you very much, Jasmine. I really enjoyed our time together.